what I'm doing is plucking off the needles. I'll be putting them underneath the dissecting scope later on. And I'll be observing the stomata. Stomata are the small little pores or apertures that are within leaves and needles. They are the actual openings that do gas exchange. So carbon dioxide goes through them and through a, a series of magical steps, then I guess you could say, you end up getting oxygen and you end up getting carbohydrates and things like that, photosynthesis. This is this year's growth. And then here's last year's growth. And I'm just taking needles from the middle of the age class. When they start growing in the spring, they don't have new photosynthetic needles. They have to rely on the photosynthesis of the needles that survived and the storage in these needles because most of the carbohydrate storage in the plant is in the needles. So the needles are photosynthetic organs like leaves uh, in broadleaf trees, but they're also the storage organ unlike leaves in broadleaf trees. Those sugars are used for the extension growth of the branch. And if they've lost a lot of needles, they have lost surface area for photosynthesis and they've lost their storage. And so they basically have less sugar to extend their branch. Then... The higher elevation you end up seeing needles that are typically going to be shorter. That's because you have a lot of mechanical pressures going on up there, damages, abrasion from snow, wind temperatures are a lot colder up there. And so in order to avoid any excess damage, I'm gonna make things somewhat smaller. And you see that with the vegetation up there overall. They're just very close to the ground. Up here in the mountains, the Chugat Mountains here, the reduced white spruce growth correlates with loss of needles in the winter. At the end of each summer, at the tip of each branch, there are three buds laid down. And these buds will then grow and extend out in a fan-shaped fashion the next year. And the number of needles that are going to be forming next year, the bud has initiators for each of these needles. And so the late summer climate decides how many needles you have. We choose a, a subset of trees that are located up at the higher elevation, and we also do the same for a lower elevation. I look at last year's needles and I just pluck a bunch off from the middle of the cohort and then I, I freeze them for a little while because it, you know, I'm tired by the end of the day after collecting everything and then I come back and I put the needles under the dissecting scope and I take a few pictures. I'm, I'm actually only able to get two sides. It's very difficult to get four sides. I just don't have the equipment for that. I end up taking pictures of the two sides and then I access a program called Image J and ImageJ allows me to do spot recognition and I'm able to take all the green away and just focus uh, mainly on the stomata and then it, it gives me a count at the end of the day of how many that it recognizes and I'm able to get a number and then I can compare are these needles showing more stomata than the other needles. It's indicating there are about 385 stomata um, within that small little area. And the average size on there is about 0 0.003. The net results was that during a good year like there was last summer, there was no difference between the density of the stomates or the size of the stomates between tree line and down here. I have to emphasize these were, have been very unusual summers, but we have had two summers now in a row. Thank you.